Episode 12, Questions and Answers are based on the book Fish Processing Technology in the Tropics. Topic, Salting. Choose the best answer. Let's begin. What is the purpose of salting fish? A. To enhance the flavor. B. To increase the moisture content. C. To accelerate bacterial growth. D. To lower the moisture content and preserve the fish. What is the purpose of salting fish? D. To lower the moisture content and preserve the fish. How does salt preserve fish? A. By increasing the moisture content of the fish. B. By inhibiting bacterial growth through osmosis. C. By freezing the fish to prevent spoilage. D. By accelerating enzymatic activities. How does salt preserve fish? B. By inhibiting bacterial growth through osmosis. What happens when fish is placed in a salt solution stronger than the concentration of salts in the fish cells? A. Water passes from the brine into the fish cells. B. Water passes from the fish cells into the brine. C. Water evaporates from the fish cells. D. No exchange of water occurs. What happens when fish is placed in a salt solution stronger than the concentration of salts in the fish cells? B. Water passes from the fish cells into the brine until the two solutions are of equal strength. When does the salting process end? A. When the fish becomes completely dried out. B. When the fish reaches maximum salt concentration. C. When the fish turns brown in color. D. When the fish has the desired taste, consistency, and odor. When does the salting process end? D. When the fish has the desired taste, consistency, and odor. How is salt typically obtained for salting fish? A. By grinding up rocks. B. By extracting it from plants. C. By evaporating seawater. D. By synthesizing it in a laboratory. How is salt typically obtained for salting fish? C. By evaporating seawater. In which methods of fish preparation is salt commonly used? A. Drying and smoking. B. Canning and marinating. C. Fermenting and canning. D. Smoking and marinating. In which methods of fish preparation is salt commonly used? A. Drying and smoking. What is the main chemical composition of pure common salt? A. Sodium chloride. B. Magnesium chloride. C. Calcium chloride. D. Iron sulfate. What is the main chemical composition of pure common salt? A. Sodium chloride. Which impurities in salt can encourage the development of rancidity in fatty fish, which can result to unsightly yellowish or brownish color in the finished product? A. Sand and dust. B. Magnesium and calcium chlorides. C. Copper and iron. D. Carbonates and sulfates. Which impurities in salt can encourage the development of rancidity in fatty fish, which can result to unsightly yellowish or brownish color in the finished product? C. Copper and iron. What is the effect of high relative humidity on salt containing calcium and magnesium chlorides? A. It causes the wetness of the salt. B. It enhances the whiteness and firmness of the product. 
C. It promotes the development of bitterness and brittleness. D. It inhibits the growth of halophilic bacteria. What is the effect of high relative humidity on salt containing calcium and magnesium chlorides? A. It causes wetness of the salt. Which type of bacteria are often found in many commercial salts and can cause pinking in cured fish? A. Spoilage bacteria B. Halophilic bacteria C. Pathogenic bacteria D. Acidophilic bacteria Which type of bacteria are often found in many commercial salts and can cause pinking in cured fish? B. Halophilic bacteria what can halophilic molds in rock or mine salt cause in salted or dried fish? A. Rancidity B. Spoilage C. Pinking D. Done What can halophilic molds in rock or mine salt cause in salted or dried fish? D. Done why is it important for salt to have a reasonably small grain size? A. To facilitate close contact with the fish surfaces. B. To slow down the drainage of fish juices. C. To prevent the entrance of salt to the inside of the fish. D. To enhance the whiteness and firmness of the product. Why is it important for salt to have a reasonably small grain size? A. To facilitate close contact with the fish surfaces. What is the recommended salt mixture for direct salting? A. 100% coarse grain salt. B. 100% fine grain salt. C. 50% coarse grain salt and 50% fine grain salt. D. 2 thirds coarse grain salt and 1 third fine grain salt. What is the recommended salt mixture for direct salting? D. 2 thirds coarse grain salt and 1 third fine grain salt. Which size of grain salts? or salt grains is suitable for brine preparation. A. Coarse grain salt B. Fine grain salt C. Medium grain salt D. Large grain salt Which size of salt grains is suitable for brine preparation? B. Fine grain salt What condition can occur when small grains of salt act too quickly on the fish surface. A. Rancidity B. Spoilage C. Salt burn D. Bitterness and brittleness What condition can occur when small grains of salt act too quickly on the fish surface? C. Salt burn What physical properties of salt are important when dry salting fish? A. Grain size and color. B. Moisture content and hardness. C. Dissolution rate and drainage capability. D. Whiteness and firmness. What physical properties of salt are important when dry salting fish? C. Dissolution rate and drainage capability. Which factor influences the salt uptake in fish? A. Fat content B. Protein content C. Thickness of the flesh D. All of the above Which factor influences the salt uptake in fish? D. All of the above What effect does fat content have on salt penetration in fish? A. It enhances salt uptake. B. It slows down salt uptake. C. It has no effect on salt uptake. 
D. It depends on the type of fat present. What effect does fat content have on salt penetration in fish? B. It slows down salt uptake. How does high protein content in fish affect osmotic equilibrium and salt penetration? A. It accelerates osmotic equilibrium and salt penetration. B. It delays osmotic equilibrium and salt penetration. C. It has no effect on osmotic equilibrium and salt penetration. D. It depends on the type of protein present. How does high protein content in fish affect osmotic equilibrium and salt penetration? B. It delays osmotic equilibrium and salt penetration. What effect does the thickness of the fish flesh have on salt diffusion? A. Thicker flesh promotes faster salt diffusion. B. Thicker flesh slows down salt diffusion. C. Thickness has no effect on salt diffusion. D. It depends on the temperature of the environment. What effect does the thickness of the fish flesh have on salt diffusion? What effect does the thickness of the fish flesh have on salt diffusion? B. Thicker flesh slows down salt diffusion.